this video is a repost, so if you start watching it and you think you already watched it, it's because you probably did, so it is a repost. Uh, but thanks for watching. I appreciate it. All right, y'all, if I recall correctly, I put, the, I put a set right here, the same set, um, last year in my first, I think it was opening day, uh, but my first trapping video of last year, I had a set right here, and I caught a fox in it, and I reset it, and I got my finger caught on it, caught in the trap on camera, so that was, it was at the very end of the video, so. But I got this trap here, same trap, bridge one and three quarters, got this rock right here, you can't really see it, but it's here farmer sort of planted over it a little bit it's it's between that field and this field but this is a good spot for some reason caught three foxes and three possums here last year so got a nice dirt hole down there with the bait that I made in the last video or whatever video and then I have some Dunlap's Hostile and my lure mix of a million different scents in it so that's a good set I also set one uh, way down the way there with a Duke 450 so I'm going to get out of here and hopefully set more traps all right well got the trail camera here by the barn and a dog proof right there and the cat checking it out probably gonna eat the food that I put on the ground oh yeah no there's chocolate in my bait so I can't have Arya going over there Come on, here. And then there is a dog proof up there. Well, y'all, I am out in the middle of a windy field. Uh, he just cut uh, some some of the soybeans out of this field. I well, harvested them. But I was hunting deer right over there the other night, I think two nights ago. And there was, I seen a fox run around this uh, pile so I I actually called him in to my uh, stand over it well where I was sitting and I almost shot him but well I couldn't have shot him it wasn't fox season actually I could have because now I have an excuse down there's some feathers over there's some more and I think there's more down there from a rooster that we had but is now deceased and he's got a hole right down there so, I'm going to be trapping this fox soon, and my battery's about to die, so I will sign off for now, but we're going to get this guy. Well, y'all, easy as that. First trap check. Today's Sunday. All right, y'all. First day of trapping season. The battery on my camera just died, so I got about two seconds of filming in, but... We got a fox on the first day. Today's Sunday. I set traps yesterday. And got him right there. Oh, I showed y'all the set. And I got to leave for church in a few minutes. So I'm going to get him dispatched. And we're going to get on with our life, I guess. Skin him later. Ain't that pretty. Okay, well, I just took the trap off, but it was a perfect pad catch. You can see right there's the line. No broken bones, no nothing. I mean, it, it won't bend right there because his bones aren't broken. No, nothing's wrong with him, besides the fact that he's dead now. But thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day and a beautiful fox. That is amazing. Watch him jump and bite me. Alright y'all, there's my fox hanging up on a board right there. He's a pretty one. Nicely furred up and everything good. So I'm gonna hang him up in the basement with a squirrel I just put up the other, uh, yesterday I think. And yeah, he's a pretty fox. That buzzard is sitting on that pole, that skinning pole I put there yesterday to skin that fox. The carcass is over there. There's another buzzard up there. 
So there's two here. They're eating the fox carcass that I left there. Skint it yesterday. Put that pole up. That was a dead tree that was leaning over, so I broke it down, knocked all the branches off of it, and put it up right there so I could have a place to skin my fox. That's pretty cool. I'm surprised they found it in the forest. Alright, well, here's the mound that I saw the fox on, and I did a short little clip on it. But, uh, I don't know if I showed this, but it's an old, I don't know, just a depression in the ground. So I made a hole, dirt hole in there, got some of my lure up there, a uh, trap 450, Duke 450 is right there, and then some, my bait that I made down in the hole, and then some predator seducer, and another scent that I have. So, there we go. I'm just putting it on record. I think we're, I actually saw the fox this morning while I was out deer hunting. It was right over there. So, I'm going to go put another set in right over there somewhere. Alright, right over there was my last set. And right here, had a set here last year caught, and a raccoon, I think. They're probably in a video somewhere. And this log is, it's like a little cubby. So I just have some sheep's wool and some bait back there and then some lure on top and a bridger number 11 chained to this uh, mess of vines here so it's more blocked in so shouldn't catch a coyote or a fox but hey I'm gonna be happy if we do so okie dokie same set I caught that fox um, three days ago I think and Caught my second skunk ever. Actually, that's where that set is. I caught my first skunk right here, or like right there. It's uh, I had a number one Victor jump spring there, trying to catch a groundhog out of a hole, and I actually caught a skunk. And this one, he's scratching himself. Bridger one and three quarters. Pretty much the exact same set as the one I showed at the beginning of the video. But I'm going to get closer to him and then get him dispatched. That's pretty neat. Yeah, so there's the hole that I caught my first one in. And right over there, I don't think he sees me. Hopefully he's just a regular skunk. He looks like a big one. But hopefully he is... A regular skunk and not rabid. That wouldn't be good for anybody. I think that's about all we need to see till we get closer to him when he's uh, dispatched. Well, y'all, here's the short story. It took me probably seven shots to kill it. It, he would not die. I don't know if I just couldn't hit the heart or what. But he, I finally, I mean, I was standing right there, and I just pointed the gun at his, at his shoulder, shot him, and he flipped over and died. So that was the only shot that mattered, I guess. But there's a perfect pad catch, and he is dead. Smells a little bit. I think those are his two glands, or something back there. <gasps> Did y'all see that? It's not actually a big skunk, it is a small skunk. I thought it was bigger, it's got a lot of fur on it. I can smell him now, but that was the same way with the last one I caught, so... I'm gonna take him out of the trap. One thing about these skunks is they have long claws. They're basically miniature badgers. But he's small. He's a pretty small one. But it's a nice skunk, so. Alright. Uh, I got that skunk skinned out earlier. That's how much essence I got. Uh, that's maybe half an ounce, three quarters of an ounce. It's a two ounce bottle. Two, yeah two ounce bottle so that's a fairly good amount 
I'm gonna go reset the trap right now. I might film that, I might not. All right, well, there's the finished set. Got a good amount of blocking here. Area's all tore up, sort of smells like a skunk still. So that's good. Some good eye appeal and smell appeal. Got a dirt hole, get then the trap just buried there, almost like a trench set. And there is our last catch of the day of the video. Um, caught him over on the other side of the barn. I think I showed you all the cage trap. Maybe I didn't. No, I didn't. But I had a possum on trail camera over there. So, figured I'd throw a cage trap in there. And we got him. Just a little one. Alright, I just wanted to end the video off with showing what I used to process the furs that I have. My knife is a Baron Sun. Uh, I think it's a bird and trout knife. That's the model bird and trout knife. It's got sort of a finger groove right there. And then comes with this sheath. It's just a short little blade, but it's got a sharp point, which I like a sharp point. Um, I got this just so that I could have a nice knife that doesn't have a bunch of moving parts so that I don't have to clean it every time I skin something. Just the, the aluminum tail stripper from f and I guess it's the Freedom brand. Aluminum is all you need. You don't need the heavy duty steel one. This one I bet will never break. This is the Freedom brand flushing knife. I don't use it much. I don't really like it. The circle grips on it make it slippery whenever the fat gets all over it. I use this one. I'm pretty sure I mean, stainless steel Japan. It was, I'm pretty sure it's a paint stripping knife, but it looks like a flushing knife and it works like a flushing knife. It's got more of an edge on it, which I like. This one doesn't have an edge on it. You can probably get one that has an edge, but I just like this one. It works fine for, I was using it on the skunk yesterday and it was working fine, but it was, I don't know, 78 degrees yesterday. The fat was dripping everywhere. I got fed up with it. Took the skunk off of what I use for flushing is that. It's that one is just a fox stretcher, I think. So I don't have my flushing beam ready yet. So I got fed up with the skunk, took it off the board, threw it in a couple plastic bags and threw it in the freezer waiting for a cooler day. Um, and that's what I'll probably do for whatever I catch in the next few days. <laughs> Today's Halloween, record-breaking heat um, for Halloween, so. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and I thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Adios.